Well, here we are with our, our podcast for the North New South Wales Conference and on the, the Bible and the book of Hebrews. And before we start, I'd just uh, like to introduce uh, my guest I've come uh, that's come with me today, um, Brother Julian Archer. How are you doing, Julian? Very well, thank you, Brendan. Great yeah. to be here, mate. Yeah, thanks very much for coming along. Might, we might just get us introduce ourselves first. Julian, just want to give a little bit, most people would know who you are, uh, but do you want to just give a bit, bit of background for those that may be listening who don't know who you are? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm currently working as the Stewardship Director of the South Pacific Division uh, in Sydney. I'm based in North New South Wales. And uh, yeah, when I'm in North New South Wales, I'm in my happy place. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a great, great place to be. Uh, and not just not just the environment, but the people, the church. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place to to live and praise God. It is, it is, and and I'm only a newbie to the North New South Wales Conference. Uh, hardly been two years, I think, and one, one year up here uh, in Moolamba. Uh, it is a beautiful spot, isn't it? And mm. God's taught me the the important lesson: you go where I send. And then there's fringe benefits that go with that. <laughs> I didn't ask for a beautiful countryside. I didn't ask for beautiful people, but he, he gave mm. us some wonderful place up here. Mm. And it's awesome. So for me, uh, Brendan Scale, uh, I do some Bible work down at the Byron Bay Church. And it's my absolute privilege and, and honor to be part of the Manorhaven team, uh, the Manorhaven Cafe that's associated with the church. And it's just been such a joy. It hasn't been one year yet, but I think in my short time there, I've probably had more opportunities to that God's arranged to share his good news and his love than I've had in many, many years. Mm. And it's just such a wonderful place to uh, to serve the Lord. And mm. and thanks to Julian, uh, he, he saw the Lord's leading and they were looking for a position and just God orchestrated that and he knew what was best for, for me at least anyway. It's just been wonderful. Yeah. So before we get into our lesson, we might just open with a word of prayer uh, because mm. without God's spirit, uh, it's just words, but with his spirit, uh, we can know that heaven is talking to us. So we're just going to open in prayer. Almighty loving God, we just praise you for your power and your might and your strength and mostly for your love, Lord. Above all, we need your love in our hearts, your care, your sympathy, your understanding. And we just thank you for the power that you give that comes through that too. And we welcome your presence here. Uh, we want to be emptied of self, Lord. Let self be buried in the grave that only you will speak in us and through us today and our lives will be refreshed through hearing this. We thank you for hearing us and answering our prayer and we look forward to what you share with us today. In the blessed name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Okay, so we're looking at lesson 12 this week and we're looking at Hebrews 12 uh, verses 18 to 29. Julian, I might get you to read the memory verse before we get into it further. Can you read the memory verse for us? Yeah, so this is uh, Hebrews 12, verse 28, and it says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, we're going to get back to that as we get through the lesson, uh, but we're going to go back uh, to uh, the first uh, uh, verses that the Hebrews talks about in the lesson, and that's verse 18, and the passage is through there uh, to verse uh, 24. Four it is, I think it is. Our, our studio that we're talking from today doesn't have huge light, <laughs> and so and my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So I'm looking at, at my Bible with this small print. Um, yes, verse 24, as I get a little bit more light there. So before we get into talking about the unshakable kingdom, and that's the, the theme of, of this lesson, receiving an unshakable kingdom, we want to look first, as I said, at that first part. Uh, the subtitle in my Bible is called The Glorious Company. Uh, but the first the thing that comes out to me there is the comparison. When I look at Hebrews so far, I see Paul setting up a, a I guess, an, a, a very persuasive argument about who Jesus is and how qualified he is to help us. Uh, in chapter one, he talks about that Jesus was fully God. So the all-powerful universal ruler uh, who has been around forever and is and is to come, and he's qualified with his power and might and and he's uh, all-knowing as well. And then chapter two talks about how he was fully human as well. And so he, he's able to, he's got the, the highest of heights, but he's also got the lowest of lows. Mm. And his ability there to be, it says, because he was tempted in all points as we are, 
he's able to help us. Mm. And it continues on through there. And we know the Hebrews uh, were going through a tough time. And what I love about this is Paul's talking about, okay, what the, the old Hebrews, the, the Old Testament Hebrews, the Israelites, what they were facing, they had an earthly sanctuary, but we have a better one now, a heavenly mm. sanctuary. They had an earthly high priest with its limitations, and but we have a great high priest now in Jesus. Um, they had a sacrifice, but the sacrifice couldn't save them. But we have a sacrifice now that can save us once and for all. Mm. And and Paul's going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, the earthly to the heavenly, earthly to the heavenly. And that's what I love about uh, this passage here, starting at verse 18. Uh, he starts there. Uh, oh, sorry, that's that's me. What have you got out of Hebrews so far, Julian? I skipped a bit there. Yeah, oh, pretty similar, mate. Pretty similar. It's, it's uh, To me, it's, it's the book of better. Yeah. It's the book of better. Yeah. We've got. Uh, a better sacrifices, better high priest, better covenant, better rest, better priesthood, better king, better kingdom, better sanctuary. <laughs> just, but I think Paul's just so excited; he's beside himself. Yeah, and he's he's just saying, guys, yeah, because he's writing back to the you know the the Hebrew Christians in yeah. Jerusalem, yeah, um, and maybe even to some people who are just coming from Judaism uh, across too, yeah. and they're like, mm, yeah, should I, shouldn't I? Yeah. He's just saying, jump on board, guys. This is yeah. the best. Yeah. You know, yeah. good, better, best. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I'm guessing for the Hebrews, they they well understood far better than us Christians about uh, the Old Testament, the, the mm. Old Covenant. They understood that far better than we'll ever understand. Mm. And they thought it was pretty good. Um, their, their sanctuary service for how many thousand yeah. years, yeah. they were very familiar. And that was the way. Uh, yeah. Now they understood it was the way, the truth, the life, pretty much. That's what, that's what God had given them. Yeah. And they were being, they, you know, when they were following what God did, which they sort of very varied around, they were human like us. You know, yes. sometimes they were following it better than other times. But when they were following it, they knew they had a deep peace in their heart that yeah. they were doing what God wanted them to do by yeah. going to the temple, by keeping Passover, by doing the sacrifices and all that for generations. Yes. And then Jesus comes and lives and dies and is resurrected and is taken back to heaven and appears to Saul, who becomes Paul. And some years later, Paul writes this. And it's it's just absolutely transforming for them. Like yeah. like it's a it's a major leap that yes. they have to take. Yeah. And, but and Paul's got his best. <laughs> there there it is again. Yes. He's got his his best description of how good this is for yeah. them in Hebrews. Yeah. 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 I'm wondering if it's almost like he he's saying in his mind, "You thought that was good. Mm. You thought that was good. <laughs> but wait, I've got to show you something that's." Far, far yeah. better than that. Absolutely. Is that what you what you sense through that? I, I think so. Yeah. 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 And the and the only for Paul, the only culmination, the only thing better than what we've got now as yeah. New Testament Christians, yeah, is what's coming. Amen. And he and then he just then he moves into that and he's just oh he's you know, he's yeah. just going so excited about yeah. what's to come. Yeah. Beautiful. And and one thing that sticks out for me is this is the author Paul. We know the audience are facing difficulties. Mm. They've accepted the truth. They've seen that Jesus was the Messiah and that he can lead their lives. And then they start facing difficulties, some mm. trials, hardships. Mm. And the Hebrews talks about how they're starting to possibly wander and wane a bit. Mm. And I love that Paul is the author. He's saying, I know what hardships are like. Mm. I know what tough times are like. And this news is still amazing mm. and God can get us through. And just on that, on those tough times, we believe that this book was written or this letter was written to the Hebrews in 69 AD. Yeah. One year before the destruction of Jerusalem. Wow. And so it's almost like the Holy Spirit looks down and says, hey, these people are going to need something to get them through. Yeah. They're about to have not only all their sacrificial system come to an end and the, the curtain being torn in the sanctuary has yes. happened at Christ's death and all of that, but their beloved city yeah. is about to be just flattened to the ground. Exactly. They're going to be spread to every corner of the earth. Yeah. Let's give them a message, something to hang on to, sure. on to through really tough times. Yeah. And, and there is, as you say, there's a lot of encouragement and hope in this letter. Yeah. And, and you're right, because when Jesus came and, and the veil was ripped and the, uh, the sanctuary service was ended, they would have been like gobsmacked, head wagging, like, mm. what's just happened? Mm. The only way we know how to be at one with God has just disappeared. That would have been huge mm. for them to accept that, well, there, there's something, a new way, but the, the fall of the whole nation, 
mm. uh, when their their city, which was going to be um, the the hub of the of, of the new earth, um, Earth right. made new, as Eni's eye talks about it. Yeah. That was that was really absolutely huge, mm. and isn't God merciful? Right. Just before a, a, a very difficult time comes, He gives a message of hope. Absolutely, and we see that over and over, yeah. don't we? We see it in our own day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Fulfillment of prophecy yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah, and I guess for me, when we're looking at um, in, in Daniel, Daniel twelve talks about a, a time of distress such as never was, mm. and how blessed we are to have the words of Scripture today and mm. spirit of prophecy to say, I'm going to give you some beautiful pieces of gold that you can hang on to that'll get you through mm. some times that are coming. Yeah. They're going to be tough. They're going to be hard. And you're going to feel like giving up and, and throw it all away. But I'm going to give you something you can hold on to mm. and uh, an unshakable kingdom. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we haven't even started the lesson <laughs> yet. <laughs> okay. So our first point, as I mentioned, was uh, uh, verse 18 and uh, through to 24. And the point that came out to me was, uh, again, Paul uses the earthly versus the the, the heavenly, uh, the the good and the better. Mm. And when I read through that, I had a, a sense of a solemnity, a sense of awe, and probably a sense of fear too. And it's probably rightfully so because the Israelites didn't not really know who God was. They'd had four hundred years of being slaves and 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 diluting and eroding of, of who of Yahweh was. And I was reading through through these verses, um, and it starts off, um, yeah, the mountain that there was that may not be touched and burned with fire and blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the, uh, and those who heard it begged that, that they should that word shouldn't be spoken. Mm. That's a pretty fearful scene. Mm. This um, is Mount, Mount Sinai, isn't this it? This is Mount Sinai. Yeah, Going right. back to Mount Sinai. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty pretty fearful, a pretty fearful event. If mm. I watched a movie around that, I reckon I'd be cowering <laughs> in the corner because I don't like movies like that. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, it says, if it's in so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight. That's pretty, that's pretty mm. full on. Mm -hmm. And it just, it stuck out to me. We need to be very aware of who God is. Mm. There are many on our planet who say God does not exist. Or if he does exist, he's impotent, has no power. Mm. It's almost deism. There's planet Earth and all the best. This reminded me, this section here, this... Be careful what you talk about God and who he is and what he's done. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And even, you know, it says there in the end of verse 21, and Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and tremble. <laughs> <laughs> That's Moses. No wonder the rest of the people were hide, yeah. hiding in a corner. Yeah. 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 It just really stuck out to me, but but on the that's on the one side that I give fear and reverence, but the other part of that is also uh, the point that this was a celebration because the next part of that of that uh, uh, that uh, section talks about the celebration. Mm. Mount Sinai was a huge celebration. Mm. It was their first taste of true freedom because they'd been in bondage four hundred or so years. And they'd only known slavery. And yes, they'd had the miracles, but the miracles that still happened, still happened in Egypt, in the land of slavery. Mm. And even the Red Sea, they were still weren't out of slavery. They were still on the edge of, of slavery. Mm. And so this is a first scene of, of celebration. We have crossed that line and now we're now in Christ, as we understand. So in God, fully his, he's our leader. And we can celebrate that too. Mm. Absolutely. Anything that stuck out to you in those in that passage there? Yeah, look, I mean, he, he go. He's comparing uh, Sinai with Zion. Yes. And this is this good, better, best thing yeah. again. You know, yeah. you thought Sinai was big. Yeah. You know, you got wait till you see Zion. Yeah. You know, and and but as you say, it's it's a combination of godly fear and celebration. Yeah. And the celebration. Um. I don't, I don't know whether I'm skipping forward a little bit here, but you know, go for it. In when Christ came, and and Paul you know, discusses this in Hebrews, when Christ came, he lived, he died, he was raised again, he ascended to heaven, and we know around you, know, Mary, do not touch me, I've not yet been to my Father. He races up to heaven on that Sunday, says hello. We don't know exactly yes. what he did. Come straight back down. He's then on the earth for about another forty days. Then and then he ascends. 
And then there's 10 days to Pentecost, yeah. which is like the Jubilee celebration of, of days you know, since Calvary. But he says to them, just before he ascends, just wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's it. Jesus then goes off to heaven and Paul talks about this celebration and, and talks about us being in heaven with him just in a few verses further on. There's this great celebration. There's thousands of angels. There's God the Father there. It's it, it, it's it's like this ticker tape parade where the sun is coming home. It is, and He has won the victory. Amen. And they're just they're just partying. I don't know how they how they party, but we yeah. but we can see here this just this excitement um, because the firstborn has returned to heaven victorious. Amen. And that's uh, they then have this uh, this high priestly anointing service because remember He's now worthy to be our high priest yeah and uh and they anoint him with the oil and psalm 133 if I, we can't go into it now in detail but it's psalm 133 acts chapter 2 and what we're reading here all go together beautifully they anoint jesus in heaven as the new king the new high priest the oil runs down his face yeah psalm 133 talks about running down aaron's beard runs down his garment drips off the bottom of his garment and what happens on earth Fire comes down from heaven like burning oil yeah. onto the waiting ones. And what's what's the spirit? Oil. Amen. And it's this, the celebration in heaven is being reflected in, in that room Amen. At, at Pentecost. Amen. Um, so yeah, a bit, of, a bit off to the side yeah. there, but it's just beautiful how it all comes together. The Old that Testament, is. the Acts, Hebrews, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love the the oneness of scripture. Mm. They're just, mm. and and. I've just been been reading a book with our family, um, Home at Last. If you if anyone gets a chance to read it, or you may have read it, uh, it's actually uh, a story form. Uh, a gentleman named Walton, I forget his surname, uh, but wrote it, and he's compiled all, all of Scripture and Spirit of Prophecy together and written what it may be like a first-hand experience of being in heaven. And he talks about we'll be studying this forever, the, mm. the one of the Scripture, and we'll be comparing stuff we've never ever seen in the Scripture, uh, yeah. the relationship, the cross-referencing, and, and how connected heaven has been and is with humanity mm. because heaven could be celebrating up there and we could be left on our own. Mm. But he says, no, there's a direct, strong, um, intimate, close personal relationship between heaven and earth. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's beautiful. And, and the lesson goes on there. And, uh, and, and Paul talks about that we are with him in heaven. Yeah. And, and it's saying that we are with him during this celebration, which yeah. happened you know, at Pentecost. Yes. Uh, not that we're there with him physically, but we are in Christ. Amen. Our names are written in the book, yeah. in heaven. Yeah. And and Paul's just wanting to say this in every way he can. Yeah. Guys, we're already there. Yeah. We're already there. The yeah. victory is won. Yeah. Fix your mind on heaven as yeah. William Miller did. I fixed yeah. my mind on another time. Yeah. And here I mean to stand today, today, and today until I yeah. see him for whom my soul yearns. Amen. And that's what Paul's saying. Amen. He, he's saying, Amen. guys, just hang in there. It's going to yeah. get tough, but hang yeah. in there because we're actually already there. Amen. Our name is in the book yeah. of life. Yeah. Brendan Scale, yeah. written right there. Yeah. Julian Archer, written right yeah. there. That's something to get excited about. That's yeah. good news. It is. And and that's the real wrestle, isn't it, as humans? Um, uh, it is recognizing, uh, keeping our mind fixed on what is truth. Uh, mm. John 17, 17 says, your word is truth. Mm. And our biggest challenge living on planet Earth is getting distracted. Mm. And these, the Hebrews were getting distracted by difficulties. And hardships, and and I myself, I know <laughs> hardships do distract me. I mm. say, Lord, no, please keep my mind fixed on you. Mm. And what a difference it does make when God does train us bit by bit by bit to fix our eyes on eternal realities. And we've just uh, the the few verses before that talks in Hebrews twelve two. It says, "Fix your eyes on Jesus mm. because of what He has already done for mm. us." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely it's beautiful. Well, we need to keep moving along. And uh, let's look at the next passage. So I'll just go uh, very briefly over that one again. So verse 18 says, For you have not come, talking about Mount Sinai, but you have come to, uh, to Mount Zion. And that's exactly, the, that was the essence of that, that passage there. Again, the good and the bad, better. Mm. Uh, we have a huge celebrating bravation awaiting us. Yeah. So the next one to, is in verse 25. It is, is entitled, Hear, hear, hear the Heavenly Voice. And the phrase that sticks out to me, I, I like short snippets. And the phrase that stuck out to me is, with all this in mind, see that you do not refuse him. It's almost like 
someone's done so, so much for you. you then nothing more could be done for you and you're in a state of need. I remember a, a, a lady, I was working with a, a young guy, young teenager who was doing it tough. And a friend of mine and, and I took him in and looked after him, He a uh, single mum. And they had never experienced as a family anyone taking any genuine interest in them. Uh, she was doing it tough, two, two teenage boys. He was a handful, great young guy, but just a real handful. And no one ever cared about them at all. She'd been gone solo for years. Mm. And after a while, after two or three months of us nurturing and, and caring for this young guy, she called me up and we're having a chat and she said, I've told my son, do not mess this up. No one you know, no one in our lives has ever taken an interest in us before. Mm. Do not mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit like that here. I can see mm. Paul saying this. No one's taken an interest in us. The devil doesn't give a hoot about us. In fact, he wants to destroy us. See, you don't refuse him. Mm. Does, does that resonate with you and what you've read in that passage? Yeah, look, absolutely. And it's 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 a, again it's Paul bringing this this good news. Yeah, somebody loves you. Yeah, somebody loves you. Yeah, and go along with it. Yeah, because it's it's the best life ever. Yeah, um, you know I, I I'm reminded of John ten ten. A ten out of ten life. That's what Jesus yeah. says. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah, you might have it to the full. Yeah, and and Paul's just saying. Look, accept it. Yeah. See that you don't yeah. refuse him. You know, just, yeah. just, just go along with it. Yeah. And even in the hardship, because the audience is doing it tough. Mm. So in, in hardship, the, the money might be running out. The bank might be showing very low or zero or even negative. Mm. But hang in there. Mm. God is me. Jesus is mediating for you. Yeah. Hang in there. There may not be much food in the fridge, mm. but hang in there. Yeah. You may have just been told in COVID you've lost your job and your wife's lost your job, but hang in there. Mm. Christ is mediating. Yeah. Uh, he is faithful. He's a faithful high priest. Yeah. Come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in your time of need. Mm. He's saying, I know what hardship's like, and this is what Jesus can do through these hardships. Mm. Yeah. I got an email in the other day from a, a photographer in America, a fellow called Michael Bilk. He used to be a fashion photographer, but yeah. then he left that and he decided to uh, take photos for Christ. Yeah. In fact, to take photos of Christ. Amen. And one of them, he goes over to Italy and he sets them all up. Um, you can you can look at them on Journeys with the Messiah, uh, Michael Belk. But he's got this picture of a, a little table and Jesus is sitting on one side of the table and there's a, a wealthy Italian businessman on yeah. the other side of the table. And they've obviously just had some bread on the table because Jesus has got one slice. He's holding on to one slice of bread and he, he's got a hot drink or something there as well. But the businessman has just got up off away from the table. He's walking away. And he's holding on to about seven loaves of bread. And, and as if to say, this is my security. Yeah. You know, I'm holding on to all this. Now, it's enough bread to last him, you know, six weeks or, yes. or something. I need it. I, I'm holding on to it all. And Jesus is just laughing. He's just got this real look on his face. <laughs> of, oh, he, he still doesn't get it. You haven't got it yet. Yeah, you haven't got it yet. But uh, I know you're going to get it because like with disciples, you know, Jesus yeah. would say, oh, you heart of heart and yeah. you have little, little faith. faith. And all Do you still not believe? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but he says, you know, you, I know they're going to get it. Yeah. And so I'm going to keep bearing with them. Yeah. And the thing with this guy holding on to all the bread, you were talking about, you know, if there's no money in the account or it's gone negative or you've lost your job or whatever, the promise from Jesus is one slice of bread at a time. Amen. One, one day at a time. Yeah. That's all he promises. That's it. And actually, that's all we need. Exactly. Because we can't eat tomorrow's breakfast today. Exactly. And he just says one day at a time. And that's the faith journey. Yeah, that's it, it is. And it's not easy. Yeah. He, he says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. But that's it. Hang in there. Yeah. Hang in there, Israelites in the desert. Hang yeah. in there, spiritual Israel today. Yeah. One day at a time. Yeah. And, and and that's speaking to me. And that's the challenge in difficulties mm. is we're thinking, but, but, but there's no, yeah, what am I going to do tomorrow? Uh, okay, I've lost my job, uh, whatever. And I'm thinking ahead. But Jesus says, no, stay here with me now. Mm. I've got you. And at the end of that day, was there anything you didn't have? Well, you're still breathing now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah. I've given you all you yeah. need. 
the, the Jesus prayer, Lord, give us this day yeah. our daily bread. bread, not yeah. our year's worth of bread or yeah. our retirement or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you're saying it's not easy. It's not easy because we're not born to trust him. Mm. Our enemy is born to switch that, switch that switch mm. that we need to trust ourselves. There is no other. And he's saying, no, you can trust me. Mm. Just like my kids, my kids don't, aren't fretting right now. It's coming up to tea time in a couple of hours. They're not fretting right now. Have we got, are we going to have tea? Are we going to have tea? Mm. They just know mum and dad will provide tea. Mm. And yeah, Lord, I pray for that. Help my unbelief. Help me <laughs> in the hardships, Lord. Because it's mm. easy to say, trust God when things are going easy. Mm. But we've had a little bit of a taste in Australia with COVID. Mm. And that's where Paul's saying you have to live by the word alone. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Mm. We have to take pr his, these promises literally. Mm. My God will provide. My God is interceding for me. I can come boldly and say, God, I'm out of a job. God, I don't have any money left. But I know that you are faithful. You're a faithful high priest. and mm. You will provide for my every need when I need it. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're getting very close to being out of time. Let's speak briefly about the, the memory verse, the unshakable kingdom. Uh, just to preface that, I love uh, short little pithy things. And the thing that stuck out for me is this. Since we let us. Uh, Bible, uh, the Bible provides a lot of motivation for us. God And God always takes the initiative. And he's saying, I've done all this for you. And then he says, evokes a response uh, from us. Mm -hmm. And the part I love here is, since we, and then we see the motivation, and then let us. Mm -hmm. So from, the verse says, since we have an unshakable, received an unshakable kingdom. What do you take with that, Julian, the unshakable kingdom? Yeah, look, I think he's, he's alluding back again to Sinai as well, the, yeah. the mountain shaking and, and all of that. Um, and, he, and he's saying, look, the mountain shook. But next time, the Lord is going to shake earth, all earth, yes. and the heavens. And the heavens. It's, it's going to be the great shaking. Yes. <laughs> um, but he says, there's going to be something remaining after the shaking. Amen. A remnant, if you will. Yeah. There, and, and you can be part of that. Yes. And uh, so, so to me, yeah, it's, it's about hanging on to the only thing that is not going to be shaken down or out or away or whatever. Yes. And that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hold on to Jesus. And you're going to get through. Hold yeah. on to anything else. You're not going to make it. It's going to, you'll be shattered. Yeah. Oh, I'm reminded of the verse that Jesus says, whoever falls on this rock will be broken, mm. but whoever this rock falls on will be crushed. Mm. And I'm reminded the Daniel 2 prophecy. How beautiful is that? Mm. At the end of the prophecy, the only thing that's left standing is the rock cut out without human hands. <laughs> that's right. And, and that's what we can have that, 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 that assurance. Mm. God's word stands. Mm. I love yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's move on uh, and finish off with the, the next part. It says, let us. And the lesson talks about, uh, well, the verse here talks about let us have grace. The, the lesson talked about let us be grateful. Mm. And that's all God asks from us, isn't it? Just yeah. to be grateful. Mm. Just say, I acknowledge who you are. I acknowledge what you've done. I acknowledge what you're offering me. And I just want to say thanks. Mm. Can I just read a couple of verses there sure. that, that the lesson uh, points out there? Hebrews 12, 28. This is, this is the, the main one, we'll, we'll, and then we'll bounce off this. Therefore, sure. since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, and that's a beautiful promise right there. Amen. We are receiving, receiving. an unshakable kingdom. Yeah. Let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Amen. And then Hebrews 13, just going into the next chapter, yep. probably going into next week's lesson, but anyway. Verses 15 and 16, it says, Therefore by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, Amen. that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Yeah. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. I, Amen. I, I think there, th that, those verses bring about a beautiful thing. You know, Paul's saying, we've got this unshakable kingdom. We've got the better, 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 better of everything. Our names are already written in heaven. Yeah. What's the response? Again. What, what's the practical response? What, For sure. What should I be doing if I am saved? Yeah. And when I know that I am saved, I will praise God. Amen. I will not forget to do good and to share yeah. with the sacrifices God is well pleased. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's this practical 
Christianity yes. that comes out of the end of it because yes. a faith that is real will be revealed. Exactly. It'll be revealed in these practical things. In the nuts and bolts. The everyday, mm. the bottom line is our neighbor is going to be looking at what difference does this book make in mm. your life? Mm. The people at work, they're going to say, what difference does this, play, this book make in your life? <laughs> yeah. You can talk about it till the cows come home, but what difference does it make? Mm. And that, that's what it says, isn't it? There. Yeah. And for me, uh, it says, let us have grace. Mm. Um, my son, I have a, a blessed son who's brought me close to the Lord over the years. And God, teach me, have grace. Mm. Have grace. Yeah. That's it. And it's a superhuman ability, God-given ability. Yeah. yeah. But he says, you have been shown grace. Mm. Pass it on. Yeah, absolutely. Pass it on. Yeah. Yeah. I love that earlier in Hebrews, is it 4.18 or somewhere where he says, let us come boldly, boldly before the throne of, now he could have said the throne of might or power or yeah. or, or, what, or, or whatever. Yeah. No, God's throne is a throne of grace. grace. <laughs> and it's just like, what? What yeah. sort of a king yeah. would want a throne of grace? Yeah. Well, a king who has a shaky kingdom yeah. will, will want anything else. Yeah. They'll want the strong and the power and the might exactly. and all the rest of it. But the God of grace, yeah. he says that's an unshakable kingdom. Yeah. And that's, it is. grace is the is the foundation and love is the foundation of that kingdom. And that's yeah. why it can't be shaken. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. He, he has everything else, so he doesn't need to call it everything else because yeah. he is everything else. That's right. And the only thing that left is, okay, I'm going to be gracious. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, we're pretty much out of time. So let's get, go back through again. So what were the key points that stuck out for you so far in the lesson, Julian? Yeah, look, it's, it's this whole, I think, I think for me, it's, it's an assurance. Yeah. Assurance is a yeah. key word. Yeah. Paul is giving the Hebrews assurance that they are saved, yeah. that their name is written in heaven, yeah. not because of anything that they've done. Yeah. Solely because of what Jesus has done. Amen. This, this high priest that he describes so beautifully, who is right now intervening on Brendan's behalf, yeah. on Julian's behalf, on behalf yeah. of anybody who is willing to say, Lord, yeah. I just fall at your feet. Yeah. I need your grace. Amen. The assurance. I, Amen. That's, I think that's a key point for me. Yeah, for sure. And, and one of the things that just sticks out for me is encouragement. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's go, been through any kind of tough times, people can say lots of stuff to you. But nothing matters except for hang in there. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. And and that's what I see Paul saying to the to the Hebrews here. Jesus can help you. No one else can do anything for you. They can try and they can be a help and God can use them. Mm -hmm. But the God who made you, the God who cares for you, the God who saved you, mm -hmm. is a God who can help you now. And he alone, he alone will get you through. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love that. Mm. I love it. Yeah. We'll just pray for those that are listening that uh, this is a blessing to you and that God may draw you closer to him. And if you're a leading lesson, that we we'll pray that, yeah, that you'll be a blessing to others and God will use you as you continue to, to shine his light and love to others. Would you like to close in prayer, Julian? Love to. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, oh Lord, how beautiful you are. Father, we've had a, a small insight again today into the beauty of holiness, the beauty of grace, the beauty of love. Father, we just fall at your feet again now. And we just pray, Lord, that we might be changed. We might be renew, renewed and made like Christ. And Lord, as we lift up Jesus, may your grace and your love draw others to you, Lord, because we know that you're not willing that any should perish. And we just want to be used by you to save as many people as possible, to introduce them to your love and your beauty. So Lord, we pray that you'll please go with us now in all that we do and say. May we reflect you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming along today, Julian. I appreciate it. Great to be here. See you later, everyone.